Okay. Oof. <clears throat> All right, I actually see something. That's good. Apparently it just goes, right? <laughs> All right. Give me a few minutes to get this all set up. Because <clears throat> this is my first time streaming to YouTube. I don't know exactly how it works. Apparently it just starts streaming, so... That's nice to know. So I just need a few minutes to set this up. here <clears throat> we're gonna need to I turn this light on turn this on Let's take a look. Aha! There we go. Now it would seem as though my camera's exposure is off, so I need to fix that really fast. That is really bright. There we go. That looks a little bit more natural. Slightly. There we go. I'm working on highlights today, so I don't want it to be too blown out. Otherwise, nobody will be able to see what I'm doing. And that's not good. Okay, that did not... <laughs> okay, just a second. <clears throat> did not do what I expected it to do when I closed that window. There we go. It's a little on the pink side, but I'm not going to worry about that. <clears throat> there is something I can do to sort of fix it, but I'm not going to overly worry about it. This painting is in black and white, so it's not horribly imperative that the color is accurate, but I am going to de desaturate it a little bit to <clears throat> compensate for the the weird pinky color. And that should do it. And that should be fine. Any more than that, 
and I'm overdoing it. Turn that off. Turn this off, and this might help the color. Actually, I think it did. <laughs> See, my, uh, my studio light is color calibrated to the camera. Um, but the, uh, the room light is just the standard incandescent, you know, <clears throat> regular orange light bulb. So I have a pretty good feeling that was contributing to that pinkish color, that, that, um, tint. All right. So the painting is black and white tonight. So all I have to do is lay out some white and I need a paper towel really quick pull that over and stick it here there we go I like to clean off the uh, the neck of the tube of paint before I put the cap back on that way it does not um, you know it minimizes the probability that the cap will get stuck on there because of excessive oil all right so if anybody caught on I'm using Georgian's ivory black and Gamblin's titanium white. Not that it matters. It really doesn't matter for black and white. The only differences you'll have <clears throat> are in your ability to mix grays. So a higher a higher pixel de uh, <laughs> pigment density. Well, I'm still in uh, I'm still in 3D mode here. <laughs> A higher pigment density will um, make it. Uh, let's say your 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 white, like in my case, my my white is a professional grade uh, white from Gamblin. It has a much higher uh, amount of pigment than my black, which is Georgian. It's a student grade. It's not a bad student grade by any stretch, but it is a student grade, and so the pigment concentration in that paint is nowhere near as high as Gamblin's here. So I'm going to need a lot more black than I normally would say if the black I were using was the same brand, was Gamblin Artist Oils. If that were the case, I wouldn't need as much black, but in this case, since I'm using a black with a lower amount of pigment I will need a little bit more to get the same shade right that's the only difference doesn't really matter beyond that in the in the sense of this you know what I'm trying to do here which is basically just put the finishing touches on this egret here So what I need <clears throat> is some medium, and I don't need a lot. I just need a small amount in the beginning here. Um, what I want to do is oil up the painting. I haven't touched this thing in at least two or three months. So the layer here is completely dry. And what I'm going to do is... Let's do this so you can see it. I've got a uh, cosmetic sponge here. This is a um, cheap, you know, got this at Target. And this is some of my medium. <clears throat> uh, it's basically just stand oil, walnut oil, linseed, and um, safflower. Just all mixed together. And I'm just going to get a little bit of it just like that on the corner. And come up here to the painting and 
I shouldn't have anything coming off. But you can see where I'm putting this oil that the value drops back down to where it was when I first painted this thing and it was wet because as it dries, <clears throat> excuse me, as it dries, it will sink, especially if you're using an acrylic um, ground like I was. You see how it, how that value changes? So I'm going to oil out the entire painting. I'm just going to get the whole thing wet. And I shouldn't need any more oil than I put on the sponge. I'm just dabbing it around and every once in a while turning it around. I know that's kind of hot, you know, kind of blown out there, but I shouldn't see any of my paint coming off. And if I do, then I didn't wait long enough to do this because it should be completely dry. And I shouldn't see any paint coming off. All I want is a nice wet surface and it's not overly saturated. Remember, I just, I just sort of, you know, flipped some, some of the oil onto this sponge and I'm just going around the whole thing evenly, more or less, very lightly. I'm not really pushing. And when I get to the bird, I'm just sort of tapping, but now you can see how shiny it is because doing this restores the oil content to the surface. I'm still not getting any gray on my sponge, which is great. Um, again, this has been dry for months. So what I'm getting, what I'm seeing now that it's oiled out is the original depth of my values that were there when the painting was still wet. Because before it was looking kind of gray, you know, milky. It was looking a little washed out, especially in my darks. But now that I've gotten it wet, you know, I've, re I've restored that depth to the to the darks. And oh, the rest of it just sort of fits in where it needs to in terms of value. But now I'm looking at the same values I was looking at when I was painting it, which more or less match up to my uh, my reference over here. Now let me actually turn this so you can see the reference. Well, got to undo that. So there's the reference photo. Um, that's what I'm working off of. It's a little brighter because it's closer to the light right now, but. Another reason why it looks a little brighter is because this painting isn't finished yet. It definitely needs uh, that final detail and the, the, um, the detail that I'm going to be putting in there today is well, a lot of it is that, that extra push up toward white because there isn't pure white in this painting yet. And I did that on purpose. I left it that way on purpose so that I could come back in here now with a really small brush. I'm going to be using, I'm probably going to be using this one. This is a uh, Rosemary and Company number zero Eclipse pointed round. Um, very, very sharp, very small. I'm just going to come in here and start picking away at the hair. <clears throat> but, um, you know, not everywhere, just where I think it needs it. And I think, I think there's a, a few things that I could do here. If I have time tonight, I'll, I'll address the beak. Because I do think that the beak could be lighter, you know, it, it overall various uh, areas of this thing need to be lighter. And that's, that's the goal of tonight is just to bring this thing a little bit closer to the level of polish that uh, I know it can have, you know, this is all still a little wishy-washy in here. It needs some definition, but we'll take care of that. Now, occasionally, I'm going to be doing some value matching on my on my um, reference print over here. I'm not going to move the camera every time I do that, because then I'll be sitting here all night readjusting, refocusing the camera, and that would just slow down the process, and it 
kind of be, you know, tedious to watch that. So I'm not going to do it. When I get my third camera working, I will make an effort to have something <clears throat> on the reference and then something on the painting and something on the palette like I have now. But I, I just, I'm short one camera because it refused to work. But I'm making the best, I'm making do with what I have here. So, all right, so here we go. So and I need more medium. Now, if I put medium down on my palette, my palette's not level. So if I put medium down on my palette, it's going to run. So what I'm going to do is just take a palette cup. And I've already used this one, but that doesn't matter. It's okay. I take that palette cup because everything in there is dry. So I'm not really worried about it. Take a palette knife. This is the best way to do this so as not to make a mess. Um, I'm just going to take my <clears throat> clean palette knife and sort of get it in there and then just let it sort of drip into the cup. I'm going to do that a few times just so I get enough. This is my third layer of paint on this painting, so it does have to have a decent amount of oil in it to adhere to the fat over lean rule. Now, it doesn't have to have a lot, it just has to have more than I used previously, and I, of course, know how much that is. So I know how much is enough here. Plus, I've already got a very thin layer of oil there from the sponge. So that can just sit there and be useful. I'm going to clean off this knife and set it... Actually, I'm probably going to use this to, to mix up some grays. Uh, but for the most part, the paint today is going to be pretty thin. And by thin, I mean it's going to be loose. I'm not actually thinning the paint, it's adding oil. So I'm fattening the paint instead of thinning it, but I'm just going to get this thing pretty wet. And then come up here and sort of squeeze all of that out onto my palette. I know it might be a little hard to see. But I'm just basically transferring everything I just soaked up onto the palette right there. And I'm going to come in here and grab some white and mix that into it. This is pretty thin. Now, all I'm going to do is, is start to play with this. I'm not, you know, I'm not necessarily sure of the direction I want to go yet. I will figure that out as I go. Um, but what I'm looking for is the brightest area that I have. And I'm just going to take this sort of glaze that I have here. I know titanium white's not the best to be glazing with, but it just so happens to be all I have right now. So we'll make it work. Just gonna follow the direction of my hair and see what this does. Okay, I might need a little more, get some more opacity going on here. Like I said, I don't really know where I want to go with this yet. All I know is that I want to build up the highlights. And I'm just using pure white, remember, because this is, you know, transparent to some degree. You know what? This might actually be easier to do with my all stick. Steady my hand here. Let's just see what happens with a little bit more paint. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to build this up slowly. I think I'll take a little bit more. Now remember, this is mostly oil. This here is a... I'm thickening it up a little bit with more paint, but it's... It's still pretty much a glaze. And it's going on to that wet surface. So I'm painting wet into wet here. We'll see where we end up. And I'm... I'm because I want detail in here. I want I want to be able to see those individual little you know hairs, those little feathers. 
And I won't be able to see that if I just block this whole thing in white. I've not... Um, I've already passed the blocking stage, and this is this is all about details. Now here, what I've done is I've figured out exactly how much paint I need. And I might actually pause this for a second here and darken my... I'm going to make the video overly dark just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do this on purpose. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take the the uh, brightness down so that you can see what I'm doing in the highlights. Now this is the exposure is not correct. It's not optimal for the overall image, but for what I'm doing, it's almost impossible to see if you haven't got a good shot of the highlights. And the only way to do that is to bring the exposure down. So you should be able to see what I'm doing if I... Let me see if adjusting the contrast will make this easier to see. I'll fix this um, when I'm done, and I'll I'll post a, a properly exposed photograph of the finished piece when I'm finished with it. But for now, let's just go with this. Now you should be able to see what I'm doing a little bit easier, because so I've got the entire highlight range more or less exposed properly now. I mean, that's probably the best I can do with this. Um, more or less limited setup that I have, but... Okay, moving right along. Let's just make sure that I get all of these in the right place. My strokes are going to be very short because what I'm seeing in the in the bird is that the, the, uh, the little hairs that I'm trying to paint are pretty short. Something I haven't thought of yet is that I need to I need to make sure I can see my chat just in case anybody shows up and says something. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> um okay. Keep going. I want to make sure I lose little gaps here and there so that I don't have to go back in and repaint the darker, you know, the shadows in between the hairs. And this is, this is very rough. So what I can do is polish this up a little bit. It's kind of an, you know, kind of a slow, I don't want to call it arduous, but arduous, is that the word? Uh, taxing would be another word. <laughs> it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's just, you have to have some patience for this, right? Because if you go too fast, you'll end up having to wipe it off and starting over again is seldom fun, especially when you've put in a lot of time. To get to this point, I should continue my thought there. I still might go back over this. Remember, this is pretty thin. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty softened. With a, with, a, with a lot of oil here, so it's not as opaque as it could be. I'm going to save that for the very end. This is going to get sharper. And I'm going to build up the form 
with a whole bunch of small strokes just overlaid on top of each other so that they mass together and give me the end result that I'm looking for. At the very end, after I've done this and I'm satisfied that I've got the details in where I want them, then I'll come back in with a little bit more opacity, you know, a little bit stronger paint. And really kick, you know, where the brightest parts are, I'll just lay some pure white right down on top of everything. So this part's not really that hard. It's just, it's going to take a little while, you know, so put some music on. I'm not going to do it here because I'm streaming for you guys, but if anything is wrong with this stream, like I said, this is the first time I've streamed to YouTube. So if anything's wrong with this stream, like if you can't hear me or if for whatever reason the video cuts out. My camera might actually stop working at some point because it's not a video camera. It's just an SLR and it has a time limit, so I'll keep an eye on the stream. If I see it shut off, I will restart it, so don't worry. That's just what I've got to do until I get a more um, uh, appropriate camera. I am going to lift the top of his head up a little bit right here because I don't think I painted it high enough. It definitely comes out further. But I'm not going to worry about making it a perfect line because I think that helps to um, suggest that he's got hair, you know, feathers on the top of his head, so I'm just going to let it sort of be rough. And uh, if I get it just right, I might be able to pull a stray hair out like that. That's not even in the photograph, but I kind of like it, so... Maybe another one can take some artistic license. And just keep going. And I'm trying to... I'm, I'm going back and forth now that I've got most of this thing in here. Um, I'm going back and forth to check and make sure that my, my values are all where I want them. I may end up changing that if I don't like... I mean, it looks good to me right now, but, you know, I'm sure you... If you paint, you you know what I'm talking about when I say <laughs> I might change my mind once I once I finish this. I might not like the way that looks anymore, so it's temporarily okay. I'm gonna leave it there. Now, as I get further down here, I I will start to mix a little bit of gray in here, or I'll thin the paint down again and, and make it more translucent, transparent. And down here, I'm definitely seeing some direction to this. So I want to make sure I honor this directionality I'm seeing in the feathers. <laughs> All right, just gonna keep going. I'm gonna work from this edge inward. Keep laying over it where I want it to be brighter. And now I am starting to think that this needs to more or less level out. I don't want it to be so crazy.
Okay. I want that transition to stay there. I, I really like the transition that I have going on. Very light in there. Very specific right here. So as long as I keep the strokes, you know, following the the curvature of his head, I really can't do it the wrong way unless I load the brush wrong and that, you know, that would spoil it, but we're not going for spoiling it. We're going for plussing it. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, a lot lots going on in here. Okay, that's fine. Just keep building this up. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned before, this is the third layer of paint that's on this guy. And uh, as such, it's... I think that my camera just shut off. Hold on. That does happen. Let me check it. Hold on. Yep, we're still good. Yep, I knew that would happen. It's going to happen every 30 minutes or so. At least I can hear it. <laughs> I can hear when it does it, so... Um, it's not like you're going to be staring at webcam utility beta for, you know, any great length of time. You just have to be very slow and meticulous in areas like this that... Because I don't want to put too much detail in here, otherwise it's going to look weird. But I just want enough... to finish off the look of the, of the, you know, the feathers. Everything I'm doing is very, very subtle, and I did it, I did my best to uh, readjust the exposure of the, of the of the picture so you could see a little bit easier what I'm doing. I mean, I know it's not as good as if it were right in front of you, you know, in person, but... It's closer. Let's see, I need, a, need something to grab onto that right there. I wish I had another clamp. You know what, maybe I can, maybe I can do it this way, rest it on the... Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Mm 
-hmm. Now there's more. I'm going to jump around a little bit here. There's more detail that I can add in this area over here. That's that I just sort of left. Undone, I guess. I left it undone. And that's gonna that's gonna tie into what I do with the beak later on. So it's gonna look a little weird for now, but not too weird. And I can punch up the white in that eyeball a little bit. I don't want to get too crazy, but... If I just touch on everything to some small degree... Remember, I do have a lot of oil in here, so it's not going to be so opaque that it just completely makes the, you know, the eye white. But I, I just need, I just want to punch it just a little bit. So I don't think it's quite there yet. Now what I'll do is I'll towel this off so that I get all of that excess off the brush and then just pull this, what I've already got here, I'll just pull it around. And that should do it. Okay, now a little more. And we'll flesh this out. That's going to come up here a little more. And then tie back into what I was doing up here. Okay. And we just keep going. Just pick at it. Little by little. Now I don't really see any feathers other shapes up here so what I'm going to do is just continue the pattern this is definitely going this direction so we'll say we'll say that is okay. Yeah, everything in here feels good. Now it looks like it's a, a lighter gray because of how transparent it is. This is still just pure white. Got to work it a little bit <clears throat> in areas like that where it's uh, not so defined, you know, it's just shapes. Back here, it's definitely got definitions. This is where all of those individual hairs are visible. So, you know, I don't have to make it exactly the way I see it, but as long as I get what I'm doing right now in general direction that I see there, it'll be okay. Now what I'll do is I'll take a little black, just a touch of it, and start to, you know, start to slide it into the white over here. Because where I want to go 
down here. I'm going to try to do this without getting too dark. Just see what I've got, right? I want to more or less match what I have up there, which is just a slight off-white tint. I'm um, sorry, shade. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you know, hairs, individual shapes that I see in there. Because putting all of this together is what's really going to, you know, make that, that, that illusion come together. <laughs> it's funny, I've noticed... Uh, that I can't talk if I've got the brush on the canvas, right? So I have to talk in between the brush strokes. That's why my sentences are broken. Don't normally talk this way. But I'm noticing that I do that. So it's like, um, always an adventure. It's funny how I can't do that, right? I have to talk in between the brush strokes, which is very strange. I find it strange. Now, one of the things I want to make sure I do is not allow these these individual hairs to get too long because that is not what I see in the reference. So anywhere where I feel like it's getting too long, like right through here, maybe I feel these strands are too long. Uh, I'll just come in and break them up with some hatch marks and it's just going in the direction that I see. And this is very light. You can see the brush isn't even... It's barely even bending at all. Just keep going over and over and over what I've done. And it's... That build-up is what's going to create the texture that I'm looking for in the finished piece. Let's see. Every time I go down and reload, I'm always hesitant about where I am because I don't want to go too bright down in here. So what I'll do is I'll just come start back up here again and slowly start to work down into the area that I want to get to. Down in here, it's got to be very, very subtle. Oh, lost my camera again. I think battery actually died. Let's see if it comes back. Okay, time out for just a second while I swap the battery out. That was a... Uh abrupt complication it's good though that it you know things like this force you to take breaks And we should be back. <sighs> Let's check and make sure everything's okay. Alright, it looks good. I think since I'm working on a different 
zone. I've moved down a little more. I will brighten this back up a little bit. Should still be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. I'll have to keep playing with that. All right, now where to put my brush? <laughs> okay, we're back in business. Sorry about that. We just have to deal with the battery once in a while. Let's see. Not too crazy about whatever that is. Okay, moving right along. This is pretty much all I'm going to do for the feathers. I'm just work my way down and make sure that the... Uh, detail is there enough to convince me that it is what it's supposed to be and I've got some I've got some highlights down here that I can drop in just isolated like down here there there's a hair that catches some light and there's another one it's got like a, a buddy there and there's a few more up here catch the light as it goes down underneath here as well and remember this is pure white it's just very uh, soupy it's basically just a glaze so it's not coming across as, as uh, <clears throat> bright as it would if it were just straight paint and I'm also painting into a wet surface so that is also helping me control it the way you see it happening here all right and this this over here is going back to being more solid. All right. I really wish I could have the camera right in front of the picture because what you're seeing is a, a skewed, compressed image because the camera's off to the side a little bit. <clears throat> but that is not possible, otherwise I would not be able to paint. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to sit here. So, trust me, it's looking okay. Little by little. Now up here, I'm beginning to see now that I've got this going. I'm beginning to see that up top, it it really does want to be whiter, you know, brighter. It wants to be closer to pure white. So what I'll do is I'll take some pure white, just straight white, and put it right here along the along the ridge where I feel like it can't possibly get any brighter, like right here. And we'll see, because <clears throat> it is actually blending. As I put it down, it is, it is, you know, it's, it's mi mixing with what's already there, which is mostly oil. So I may have to go over it a few times just to get that opacity up. And there's nothing stopping me from leaving this the way it is, letting it dry for a week or two, and then coming back to it and going over it again, just on these really bright areas just to make sure that they're as opaque and bright as possible because that's what I see in the photo I see pure white right along this this ridge here so there's a there's a few areas over here that I could sh I could uh, add this white to just along the ridge and then wipe off the brush on the towel just to get the extra paint off of it come back in here and soften this up because remember this is all wet there's all oil here so I can 
I can utilize that and push. I can take some of it and I can push this highlight down and around the corner, you know, around this lip. I can also take some and pull it this way. And I didn't reload, you know, so that's that's helping me not get too bright and I'm still not really using a gray mix. I'm just going to let that sort of fuzz out. I don't want this to be too sharp back here. So I'll mess with the edge a little bit because the paint's transparent. And that just sort of makes it <clears throat> less sharp so that all of my sharpness is in here. This is where I want my attention, uh, my viewer's attention. So if I make, you know, with, with regard to edge work, if I make every edge super sharp, I mean, yeah, it'll look good. But it's, I feel like it's stronger and more painterly to control the edges and make them sharp where you want your uh, your focal point to be and sort of let them, let them get fuzzy as they get into less important areas like the sides and, you know, over here. Um, you don't have to do that, but I think that it helps. Let me see, I've got some really white paint on here, so what I'm going to do is just take some of this from where I was before and I'm, I'm seeing this in here that I missed just some little detail okay let's come back over here and back to my oily paint and um, come back in under here because I see that I don't have this quite right enough either. Now, something else that I want to make sure that I do is this is going to be the brightest part right here. This also has to be bright, but I don't want to make it as bright as that. So what I'll probably do is just define a little bit more of this, you know, the, the, the plane that's facing the light. I see a little bit more of it here. And that I don't even see feathers here, but what I'm going to do is just follow the curvature of his neck. And then maybe put the indication of some feathers here. I mean, it's very, very thin. So it helps to get subtle detail in there, and it's not it's not uh, too bright because as soon as you go too bright, you know, you, 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 you skew the whole thing. The whole um, illusion is, is wrong. See, I almost feel like that right there is too bright. So if I go into, uh, if I do that and I feel like it's too bright, I'm just going to towel off my brush, you know, take it to the towel, wipe it off. Come back up here and just sort of take the area around it, because remember, it's wet, and blend it out so that it's not so bright. And then I'll pick up the paint that's there and uh, maybe move it down a little. Maybe I'll make some more hairs here. And just keep that trend going through here and through here here. Maybe one of them sneaks down toward the shadow. Back to my white. There aren't too many areas that I, I, I think need this bright. You know, when I get down in this area here, I'll have some black mixed into it so that it's a gray. But here, I just want to make sure that I keep the uh, level of definition up. And it does look like this extends in here a little bit more, so I can pull that in. Likewise, here, this top right edge of it needs to be brighter. Catch the light. 
And that's pretty bright, but according to the photograph, that is what I see there. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with this. Just to help with that, uh, that illusion that this is catching the light. It's coming around and it's at just that just the right angle to catch that sparkle. Just a few hairs down here. I don't want to go overboard. And those are pretty well uh, pronounced. So all I'm going to do is take my brush and mess them up a little bit so that they're not so, you know, hey, look at me, kind of obvious. And then the paint that's on them, I'll just sort of spread it around. I can spread it down here. A few more hairs down here. I don't want to go overboard because I want most of my detail to be up here. All I need are a few indications that that hair does actually extend down here. So just a few places, not everywhere. Just a few places. Let's see. This kind of wants to have something here, I think. Okay. Now, for a little bit of black, let me just grab some of it. And I put out a lot of black. I, I really didn't need that much. But I'm going to turn this area down here into a gray. I don't know if it's the right gray yet, but... We will find out as soon as I put it up here. I'll put it in a uh, more or less inconspicuous place. Just see what we've got. Okay, so that's actually a shadow. So I can use this, this value right here. Turns out that it's dark enough to be a shadow there. So I'll just draw the negative shapes in between with this. Whoops, we don't want to do that. Fortunately, this is oil paint. And I can just take it off. Don't panic. You know? Don't think you'd be able to do that with acrylic, but... Oil's very forgiving. In that you can just wipe something off with a towel or a brush. If you make a mistake... like I just did. I'm trying to shuffle my mall stick and my brush around and I clipped the the painting up there. Now fortunately it wasn't there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good that it happened on my background, but I kind of don't want that to happen in general, but if it does, you can probably fix it. Now down here, the value is actually closer to the highlight, so I'll add a little more white to it. I might abandon that shadow idea in favor of just adding more white and painting the highlight hairs in. The hairs down here do look longer. And I, again, I don't want too many of them down here because this is not an important area of the painting, but I do need something. It's, it's still kind of a block in down here. So I definitely need something that says that I paid some attention to it. Not much, but just enough that it still reads as feathers. And I can uh, work my way up here. Let's see, where are we? It's uh, almost bright enough. Let me go with a little bit more white. Now, see, having the painting underneath here already, my previous layer, I know that this value is correct because when I painted that layer, I made sure that it was right. It was, you know, this is where it's supposed to be. 
So all I have to do when I'm painting this, you know, I don't even have to check the values on the photograph here. I probably won't do it at all until I get to the beak. But all I have to do is check it up against what I've already got. And if it's too dark, then I just add some white. If it's not dark enough, add some black. Stick moved right there. I'll hold on to this thing. And I'll soften that up a little bit because I don't want it to stand out quite so much. Now this area in here, this is reflected. This area here is going to be illuminated slightly because of the, the light bouncing off of the back of his head here and hitting, hitting that. So there is an area here that I don't have really defined yet. That has that bounced light. but we'll take care of that right now. More or less just hatching, cross hatching. And if it starts to get a little dry, like I'm feeling it start to get a little dry, I can always just add more oil to it. You know, if it starts to get a little sticky and scratchy. A little more oil does not hurt. Now, I don't want it to get too bright. Now, I've got a lot of paint on here, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just move over here. Because this is where it's brighter. Make sure I get some detail in here. And then now the brush has a lot less paint on it. So I'll come over here and test it where I'm going to put a hair. And maybe a few more hairs. And then I'll get back over here. Where now I have less paint on the brush, so I'm not going to be too bright. And this just very, very softly fades down here. Now remember the, there is oil here and if, if it weren't there, this would be a lot harder. This would, this would look scratchy and dry brushed and I, I don't want it to look scratchy and dry brushed. I want it to look like supposed to look. Okay, so now, now what I've got is a little bit too much right there. So I'm just going to take the, the paper towel and squeeze the paint out of it and come down here. No, just didn't get enough paint out of it yet. So if this happens, what you can do is just come back over here into this, you know, black, this darker tone that I mixed up here, if it's not working. And then uh, put it down here and see if it's going to work. Just sort of cover that up and push it back. Just like that. Just to soften it. Because I had that, 
that mark in there that I didn't like. I've got areas right here where the canvas is showing. So since I've got this darker gray on there, I'll just go ahead and cover them up. Well, it's actually a very light gray, but... In relation to the other values around it, it's dark. Yeah, this is all very soft in here. And then here, where I've more or less left it really fuzzy, there is some there is some detail. Now I want to make sure I get this value right. So before I go and do it. I'm just going to check. That actually looks pretty good. So, right along the edge, we have a nice little glow. And then we've got a hair. And we've got another one. <clears throat> I can reinstate that a little stronger. This one. And this one too, I think. It's not quite as big, you know, it's more like a cluster. There we go. Okay. Now that's looking a lot better. I think that there are some areas up in his head still. So I'll go for this lighter gray again, this, this near white. And just come up here and very, very softly lift this out with some more hairs. So I'm looking at the photograph to see what I see there, and it looks like they're all going this direction. So I can sort of reposition my hand. Just to bring this up, because I think this shadow right here is too dark. That helped a little bit. I'm just going back and forth. I'm looking at the reference over here, back and forth, to make sure that I'm happy with it. And I do see some more areas, especially here, along the back of the neck, down in that crevice, where I left it unfinished intentionally because I had uh, wanted to come in here with this really small brush at this point and add this... Um, rim in here very very softly stick it in there wipe my brush off come back in here and blend the bottom of it into the rest and then blend the top of it into what's here Now, it's too pronounced at the bottom, so all I'm going to do is take some of this darker gray, come back in and see if I can work this in and make it look like it makes a little bit more sense. This, uh, this shadow here might actually be a little too dark, so it's actually good that I've got this wash on here. So I'll just move it around. I don't want to lose the shadow, but that actually looks a lot better. Pretty happy with that. Now, I'm looking at it and I think I'm happy with it. All right, my first temptation is to come back in here and start messing with it some more to smooth it out. But if I find myself saying, oh, I'm happy with that, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to come back up here. Try to sharpen this up. 
let's go with um, a little more pure white right along this edge. I want to make sure that my brush is nice and sharp here, so I'm intentionally refining that point. It's definitely starting to come in now. All right, I think I might actually be able to finish this thing here. Just take more of the uh, opaque white and right along this top ridge, I'll just keep packing it in there. don't even know that I need this anymore because I'm not trying to get my hairs at this point. All I'm trying to do now is get this brighter. See, yep. Yeah. Well, you know what? I do need that. Yeah, here we go. Right here. So I really like the, uh, the aspect of kind of approaching it as though I don't know what I'm doing because I figure things out as I go and I, I think that helps. You know, like just now, I felt like I could do it without the mall stick, but when I got up there, I realized that I don't know what I'm talking about, and I do need the mall stick. <laughs> um, because the angle wasn't right for my hand. All right. I'm thinking. Um, let me grab some more black. Come back down here again. Ooh, that's nice and dark now. <clears throat> if you've been watching this whole time, you'll notice that I haven't cleaned the brush yet. Clean, meaning uh, I haven't brought out any solvents yet. Um, basically just painting with oil, paint, and uh, no solvents, so there's no uh, toxicity in my workspace at the moment. Um, I tend to work this way a lot, so that I don't have to worry about... Um, my, my ventilation, which um, statistically speaking has not been ideal. I've never really been in a place where I've had good ventilation, so this this style, this this method of, of oil painting is uh, is great because I don't I don't tend to use solvents while I'm painting. Turns out I'm not going to need to check this. I'm, I'm looking at what I need right here. So I need to come in and define this because his beak is getting lost in the background and that's not good. We don't want to lose his beak to the background. That's it's kind of against the the point here. So I'm just going to lift this up here and there. And it will need to get a little brighter. I see some highlights right here that are going to help with that definition. Whoop, there goes my camera again. This time it's the timer, not the battery. At least I don't think it is. Let's check. Now we're good. Okay, 
One of these days I'll have a real video camera that won't do that every 30 minutes, but we'll deal with it. don't understand why there's a limit. I mean, I get that they, they, they need to have a timer on it for when I'm recording a video file, you know, they don't want, I don't want the file to be too big and exceed the limit of the storage, right? Like the flash drive or whatever's in there, SD card. But if I'm live streaming and I'm not recording to anything, file size is not an issue. So the thing should not turn itself off. But it does anyway. Whatever. Okay, I do need to start getting a little bit lighter here because I see those, uh, see these details in here. I see these little specks. They kind of go up here too, and here, and they're, they are seemingly random, so if I don't happen to put them in exactly the right spot, it's fine. As long as I don't ruin the overall shape that I had established before, I will be okay. And all of this down in here needs to be filled in because I don't, I still see some canvas there. Up along here I do as well, but I don't even know that that matters. Well, it kind of does. I can fill that all in with the background color at the very end because that, <clears throat> that edge here is very sharp. So if I wanted to, um, I'm not going to do it right now, but I could take the darker color, the black, and reinstate this line here, push it up a little bit and, and cover that. Uh, or I could do it with the background color, I don't know. I might actually do it, just make the beak a little bit bigger and cover it up. That'd be easier than having to remix the background tone. So I think I will go with that plan. See, I enjoy, um, figuring things out like that as I go. It's, there is a lot of pre-planning involved, but at the same time, if you uh, kind of go on an adventure and figure things out, it, it, it tends to be a lot of fun. I like that anyway. Having fun, you know, who doesn't? Okay. As long as I can see the beak against this background, I am all right with it. So I'm just going to get uh, kind of sporadic in here. Because that texture doesn't really have any form to it, it's just there. As long as I keep this line, I'll be all right. Yeah, it kind of comes down in there, doesn't it? And there's a little streak there. And down here, it looks like we've got one. And who knows, maybe there's just some little areas here where it catches. Okay. Just needed to uh, do a little makeup work right here. Okay.
so the top of the beak and I'm also seeing the uh, the background actually down here is lighter than what I have and when I fix that this will be more defined so I'll take a larger brush for that when I do when I do get there but for now Let's push this up, cover up that background. So I don't have to redo the background here. That's going to be really nice. Yeah, it changes the, uh, it changes the shape slightly, but I don't, I don't see that as being an issue. There we go. It's almost not even noticeable. So I shouldn't care about it. Okay, now the background down here. From about here up to here just needs to be, you know, this 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 area down here just needs to be lighter. A little bit lighter. So what I'll do is retire this brush. him down over there somewhere get something a little bigger let's see what i'll use is this flat flat would probably be better and i'm just going to go straight into what i had maybe i'll get a little more oil on it and then Take that straight up into this, and we'll see if that value is actually better. I think so. So I'm just going to sort of blend it in there, lift this whole bottom area up a little bit. And because it's a, a glaze, I'm not blending two different, you know, two different tones together. I'm just blending the, uh, you know, transparent paint into what's underneath it. Now that's going to get a little wonky because I can't get the brush in here. But I can fix that with the smaller one when I'm, when I'm done. I just want to make sure that this goes quick. And it's okay that it's fuzzy. Remember what I was saying about the edges. I'm not, you know, what I can do is come back in here and, and define that a little bit more, but I'm, I'm really not that worried about it. Just smooth this out work it up here. Now I don't want to go too close to the beak, remember, because I just made that brighter to set it apart from the background. So all I want to do is bleed this together so that I can't see where the trade-off is. And that helps a lot. I think down here I can also smooth this out a little bit. Let's see. All right. Cool. You know, this, uh, this dark pattern in here is you know, it's not important, really, because the photograph has an equally arbitrary shape, you know, back there that doesn't really make any sense. But 
if I if if it's bothering me, I'm, I'm not saying it is, but I mean if it's bothering you, and you want to smooth it out a little bit, then go right ahead. And like this is how I would do that. Just don't lose the edge of the bird. Blend it together, you know, and if you need to towel off your brush, come in here and then just very lightly smooth it over. Here we go. See, now I've got more definition down here. And what I can do is take my little guy again with, who knows, maybe something like this. We'll figure out what the value is, right? I don't want to make it too dark. We just got to figure it out. And I can do that relatively easy because I know if I do it wrong, it's a little too light. If I do it wrong, I can just wipe it off. Okay, so I've made it a little bit darker now. And I'll come in and let's see where we are. Still too light. Okay, we need to put more black into this. Now let's see where we are. Nice. Okay, so here. I'll just pretend like I see some something in there. Have it come out looking a little like that. And then as it goes up here, it becomes more, more of that. Now, if I think I've gone a little too dark, which I do, I'll just bring some more white back into it and lighten it up a little bit. And just go over it again. You know, I, I feel like I did make it a little bit too dark. My first impression was that it was not too dark, but now feel like it is. So I'll just work some of the lighter gray into that and pull it over to the right a little bit so that it makes a nice transition. Remember the only reason this is happening is because that canvas is wet. All right. I'm going to leave this over here sketchy. I kind of like that it's got a really nicely um, developed area there. And then, you know, over here, it kind of gets a little sloppy. I might even mess this up a little bit. Because I want it to be less distracting, less distracting. So I'm just lightly messing up what I did, not completely messing it up, just softening it so that it doesn't stick out so much. Now I'm at a point where I feel like I just need a little bit more of a lighter gray, not white, but near white. up here. Let's see, that's too dark. And I'm not worried that I put a mark up there that's too dark. I'm not worried at all. Because what'll happen when I get this right is that'll just blend away a little brighter, a little more white. A little more. I just want this area right here. No detail, just want to lift the value a little bit. Remember, if I start putting detail in there, it's going to attract people's eyes, right? They're going to see, oh, look at all that fur, you know, hair, whatever it is, feathers over there. And I don't want people looking over here to see feathers. I just want the value to be 
you know, I want the value there to make sense, and it's not light enough yet, so. I'm just going to keep adding white to this until it lightens up. Just to help define the, the fact that the back is round, you know, it's going to be catching more. It's going to be catching more light up here than it currently is. Okay. Are we there yet? <laughs> Are we there yet? No. No, we're not. Not quite. What I'm doing here is probably really hard to see on the camera, and I do apologize for that. But I'm just making this brighter, just a little bit more, so there's a nice shift from top down. A nice little gradient. And that might just about do it. There is a lot more, you know, a lot finer detail in the photograph, but I don't want to go, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit more here, but I don't want to do too much, you know, because then it's going to start, the more I do, the more it's going to start looking like a photo and I'd rather have it be painterly. A few more things around the eyes I think we need, and then we're going to call it done. Just got to make sure I've got the right value. It's important through here, especially, to make sure that your values are right. Because if you get this wrong, you kind of spoil the whole structure of the thing. Yeah, just need a few more. Now those are really bright, so what I'm going to do is just sort of leave them there and blend them in in a second. Wipe the brush off, because I got a lot of paint on there and it's too bright. So I'll reload some darker gray. Not much, just enough. Just enough to get this to soften. And that knocks the value down. Enough to get this in here. Get the detail in there where I, th you know, where I feel like it should be. And then take another look. Almost there. Right. I'm looking at it again, just comparing what I've got to what I see on the left over there. There is one more thing that's sticking out, and that's this area right here, which is there are clearly defined um, feathers in there which I don't have. So this is probably going to be it. Once I get this in here, 
there. Um, I can't see anything else right now that I want to change. I mean, maybe in a week I might, but for this, um, I think we're good. All I have to do is find the right value here. So I'm just going to touch in there. It might need to go a little darker. So I'll just come back down here to my darker gray. And we just need to define these feathers that are back here. Yep. I'll go a little lighter than that. Now that I've got the whole shape in there. So there's a lot of them. This is just one more little detail that I can put in here that's going to help punch the the end result. Okay, so we just keep this going. And we keep it going down here, which will help define our edge. More feathers. And a nice little rim that goes down and connects with that. That was definitely missing. I didn't even have it in there. Now all that's left, now that I've got it in there, is to make sure that it fits. Definitely fits as an edge. What I'm seeing now is that this area in here is a little too dark. So all I have to do is get a little more oil. Just the oil. And take this paint that I put there. And bleed it back together with this. And towel it off because I've got too much paint now. And then let's see, I've got to make sure that this is really clean for what I'm about to do. So I'm going to take the paper towel, give it a little squeeze, and make sure that I get everything out of there, or as much as possible anyway. And then come down here into this area that's dark. Make sure that I don't have anything, because this is going to pick up the oil that I put down. And then I'm just going to blur all of this together very, very softly. So that I don't have a crisp edge on the inside. It's just a nice transition that goes down. Down here. All right. Hey, Durga, you are welcome. Hello, and uh, you are very welcome. I'm just about done with this. I don't know how long... Let me see. This is my first time streaming to YouTube, so I am still getting used to the interface. Um, apparently I have four viewers. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I didn't even see you guys there. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, let me know you're here in the, in the chat, because that's pretty big. I can see that up front. I'm just about done with this thing though, so if you're just tuning in, um, you know, it'll be here so you can watch it. All I did was put my final detail layer on tonight, so, um, you know, basically all the little hairs. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it now and I really just think I should leave it alone. I don't think there's anything more that I could do to this to... I mean, I, I do see... You know what? I do see something. It's very, very subtle, and I, and I don't even need to do it, but, you know. <laughs> Why not make the stream another minute or two longer? 
more oil, more of this. Very, very, you know, there's a lot of oil. So this is a, uh, this is what you'd call a glaze. And let me check it right here. I want to soften all of this. There we go. Yeah, because it's it's nice and dark down in the corner, but but up here this is actually too dark too. So I'm just all I'm doing is is uh, lifting the value with a very 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 transparent application, almost like a a wash, like a cloud that just sits on top of it and lightens the value enough to take care of the problem. And then, you know, wipe it off, come back here and smooth that out. All right. At this point, I'm not worried about the reference anymore. I'm just going by what I see. And if I'm satisfied with what I see, then I will call it. And it's working really well for me. I think anything else I do to this isn't really going to help it, right? Not at this moment. I mean, I might think differently in a week, but right now what I'm thinking is that it's fine. And I don't, I don't want to overdo. So, you know, this is that point where you're starting to look at it and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know, what do I do? Probably a good idea to stop. And see if you still have that feeling about it after a few days or, or a week or so after this is all dried and then if there's anything else you want to make you know you want to punch or you know push further you just paint it over top of this in another layer oh yeah he's almost done i needed to get this done because this was a um this is a one shot and I've never done anything on YouTube before, so I needed to make sure that I figure it out before. Uh, I might even do the, the final uh, layer of the bird, or not layer, but the final section of the bird uh, as a live stream. I don't know. I've just had a lot going on, and this is uh, a very, very slow process getting all these, uh, getting all this content up here. It's all very new. Um, I don't want to say it's very new, because I've been doing it for little over a year but it, it definitely hasn't been a focus because uh, I've had numerous other jobs and other things going on so it's uh you know this is kind of like this is what I do when I have free time you know the the, the content the YouTube content besides it's free <laughs> you know if I were being if I were charging money for it and people were actually paying for it, the, the priority on it would go much, much higher. But the good part about it is, and, and really this is this is why it's okay, is because you can you can follow along up to the point where the videos stop and just leave it. And you can pick back up when the next video shows up. And there won't be anything wrong with that. You know, the, the painting won't suffer at all. But now that this is done, and I've got one other project I need to finish first. But after I've, after I've done that, then that bird is going to get finished. He is, he's on deck, I guess, as you'd say. So this guy just hit. <laughs> the next one is the, the next batter, and then the, the, the bird's on deck. Oh, I just lost my camera again. Okay, well now that I'm done, let me see if my camera died or if I've just got to restart it. Well, it looks like I just need to restart it.
Okay. Um, now that I'm pretty much done, I'm just going to move the camera around. I gotta get my chair out of the way. But I'm gonna move the move the camera so that it's a little more head on. A little bit more. I can't move it over all the way. But we'll try to get a better shot of it. Of course I'm gonna have to refocus. That's okay. A little bit more straight, so you can see the. You can see it with a little bit less distortion. There we go. All right. All right, so there we are. I will take a photograph of this and put it up, I guess. And uh, you'll be able to see it, um, you know, more or less uh, closer to the way I see it here in person because this, you know, this live stream isn't the greatest quality. Uh, Instagram, yeah, I do. Um, it's just another one of those things that's going to be uh, under development as I, as I, move as I transition from doing, you know, traditional non-online things to primarily online things. It's all just a, a process for me and I'm the only one, you know, I don't have any help. So it's, it's all me. Uh, but I'll definitely, when I, when I take the photo, I will put that up on Instagram. I do have an Instagram. It should just be my name. Um, you know, once this becomes more of a, um, a prime time thing, you know, all of this, I'll just have a lot more content. You know, I'll be doing this once every week, hopefully, you know, ideally once a week. And uh, everything I'm working on will be um, uploaded to Instagram, Facebook, and um, what's the other one? Twitter. Yeah. So... Grisai is pretty simple. I'm, you know, it's just black and white. It's a great exercise to practice with. You know, if you don't want to be overwhelmed with all of the information and color, uh, color mixing and all that stuff, it's like, you know, just just strip all of that confusion away. You know, take all the color away and just focus on value. Uh, and that's what this is. And um, yeah. I'm, Pretty much gonna call this one done. So, if any of you guys have any questions, uh, load them up there now. Otherwise, I will call it a wrap. All right. Well, I hope everybody has enjoyed this. Um, there will be more, I promise. It's, it's very slow going for me at the moment, and it has been. You know, we just, um, you know, I've got two, two little kids that occupy most of my day. The only time I have to do anything is at night. So if, uh, if there is any live streaming to be done, it will happen at night, right around this time like it has tonight. So uh, thanks again, everybody, and I will, as soon as I figure out how to end this stream, <laughs> um, I will bid you adieu. Ah, here it is. All right. Peace, guys.